Here's a demonstration video of how to remove and install rocker arms on a Detroit Diesel Series 53 engine. The first step is to shut off the fuel line to the engine, because in this process you'll have to remove the fuel pipes that go to the injectors and you don't want diesel fuel leaking into the head. The second step is to remove the valve cover. There's four Phillips head screws surrounding the valve cover on a, on a 6V53 and a 453 or 6. Once those are removed, you can remove the valve cover itself. And inside the engine, you want to make sure to keep everything clean. And in this process, we'll be using a half inch and a 9 16 wrench, a 9 16 12 uh, point socket, and a torque wrench to make sure everything's tightened properly. And once the fuel is off, we can go ahead and remove the, the fuel lines to the injector. And if you have the right tool from Detroit Diesel, this would be an easier process for torquing. Uh, but once these are removed, we will be able to gain access to the rock arms themselves. And now every, every piece in here has to go back in its order. Since each uh, fuel pipe has a different end on it, there's a shorter end, which is steeper, and then the longer end, which is has a shallower bend in it. And once the fuel pipes are removed, the next procedure is to remove the retaining bolts for the rocker arms, and the wrench, you remove these. You'll notice the valve bridge is coming up as the rocker arms are loosened. Once the retaining bolts are loosened, you can go ahead and, and uh, loosen the nut on the back of the rocker arm for the right side if you're going to install Jacob's engine brakes where the right rocker arm has to be changed to the one for uh, the Jacobs brakes, which has an extra, has a different pin and foot on the front. And you remove this by turning it clockwise. And once your half inch nut is, is loosened, you can go ahead and remove bolts. You can fold the, the assembly upwards and remove them one by one, keeping them in order. So that way you know exactly how to put it this back together. And now with the whole rocker arm assembly upwards you can slide the pin out to the left and now your rocker arm is loose and you can twist it off. And the whole rocker arm assembly is removed. There's a threaded end here. And this whole piece would be exchanged for the one sold by Jacobs. And the same procedure would, in, would you know, be reversed to install. Install the rocker arm. It's the right one if you're putting uh, Jacobs brakes on. Twist it clockwise to install. Standard procedure. And you twist it until the rocker arm bottoms out on the nut. And once we're at that point, we can then again line this up, slide the, the pin through. Now we can go ahead and install the stands. These have the special bolts you know, for to oil and lubricate the system, they're hollow. And these bits have a, you know, you can see that one side's flat and the other side has a bump in it. And the profile on the head itself will match that when done pro when installed properly. So you could slide one riser in and then the bolt line it up. And then the same for the other side. And now 
now you can adjust them and line them up. Just tighten them uh, by hand. And while in this process, use two fingers to hold the valve bridges down. So that way you're installing the rocker arm assembly properly and then the valve bridge is hitting both valves um, evenly. Failure to do so can cause damage to the valves. But once these are installed basically hand tight, you can feel it clamp down. And this is tight enough where now you can go back with your half inch wrench and tighten up the lock nut on the back side of the rocker arm. And once tight, this whole assembly is locked into place. And we could go ahead and use your torque wrench, and this is a snap on QJR3250, and we could tighten the rocker arm retaining nut bolts to 55 pound feet of torque. And use a slow steady torque. This one. Two. Once torqued, now we can go ahead and, re and reinstall the fuel pipes to the injector. These are supposed to be replaced every time you remove them because there's a flared end on these pipes, but you can reuse them. Um, but you have to be careful if. When running the engine, you notice that fuel is leaking from any of the connections. You should go ahead and shut the engine off and then re replace the fuel pipe to the injector. And with the proper tool, these are supposed to be torqued to 120 uh, pound inches of torque. You know, for for uh, Jacob's nut fuel pipes and Durian Colud pipe uh, pipe nuts and then 160 inch-pounds for the standard uncoated ones. And once these are all tightened down, see the proper torque specifications, which unfortunately do not have the, the snap, the uh, Detroit diesel tool to do so, I torque them until however I feel is appropriate. basically the whole assembly and we could go ahead and reinstall the valve cover just verify that the valve bridges are seated properly above uh, the valves you can install the valve cover and then the Phillips retaining screws and once all together you'd be able to fire up the engine and then you either use the new rocker arms that you purchased or you could, you, you could then test through Jacob's engine brakes. Alright, that was a demonstration on a 6V53 engine. So the same procedure um, goes for the first, second, and third set of rocker arms and on both sides of the engine. Or on an inline, it just goes, you go left to right or right to left. Just make sure to keep everything in order and everything clean.